Hello, everyone, and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal educational content, and today may be the day I earn your subscription. For today's live stream, we are dealing with day 10 of the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, which has been creatively titled Black Pills. We haven't been this black pilled since day two, day three, when we were very despondent. And then day four, day five, day six, things were looking really good for Kyle, really good. Then Kyle took the stand, which was, you know, okay. Nothing to write home about, nothing too hurtful. There's some stuff in there that's hurtful. For example, he had said to one of the guys, I, uh, one of the people that he had aimed his rifle at him, and now he says, no, I, that wasn't true. So he admits to lying in the past. He admits to lying on the video. Now he has a perfectly good reason for this, right? He's trying to diffuse tension. He meets it as a joke, whatever. But still, right, you know, it's a thing that you have to explain to the jury. And you can usually get away with explaining one or two or three things. So it shouldn't be that bad, but it's there. So, you know, not, it was, it was a minor loss. There was no real gain from it. It was a minor loss, but the defense's case was really hampered when they completely screwed up this Dr. Black, this expert who they basically completely wasted. Horrible, horrible, horrible examination. It just was completely ineffective in terms of doing everything, was slowing down and going things scene by scene and all the rest of it. But that's all in the past, right? So we all got to that, We and as of yesterday at least, I was feeling really optimistic. I, I, I was feeling really optimistic. Um, but today, unfortunately, it's, it's bad news for Kyle. It's potentially devastating news for Kyle because of the jury instructions. So the, as you may recall, the, the the prosecution wanted to bring in this refined image or enhanced image or interpolated image that came from some sort of drone camera. And if you zoom in at a part of the video and you squint your eyes really hard, you can see an outline of something that might be a person. And this person is supposedly Kyle. And then from there, I don't know what you're supposed to see, but the prosecution apparently is of the opinion that this shows Kyle pointing his rifle at somebody. Now, I've looked at these images very carefully, and I have to tell you the truth. I can't tell jack shit from the photos. I can't tell what's going on. There's just simply not enough detail. I see some black, I see, the, I see some black around his torso, which I guess I infer is the strap, and I say infer because I can't tell that. It just happens to be the right color and in the right position. But if you told me it was part of the design of his shirt, I wouldn't have anything to disbelieve you. If you told me it was a frame artifact, I wouldn't have anything to disbelieve believe you. So it might be his the strap of his firearm. I mean, that'd be logical, but hell if I can tell you that. And based on this image, based on the image, based on enhance or not, we're supposed to be able to determine that Kyle is pointing his rifle at somebody. I, I, I tell you, I can't determine anything. I've seen some people on Twitter try to show that this is the exact st same stance Kyle uses in his Instagram photo with, with him pointing, with it holding it down, right? So they kind of do the superimposed thing with Kyle from his Instagram, and they try to superimpose it on the onto the silhouette to show it's the same stance. I have to tell you guys, I'm not seeing anything. It might be that, it might be anything. It might be a tooth fairy. I honest to God can't tell. So I, I have no idea what the hell this is. It, it, I'd say it's open to interpretation, but I can't figure out what the hell's going on. I, the prosecution seems to think that they're quite sure that this is being pointed at somebody. Hell if I can tell that. But they, they're using this image as a major part of a basis to ask for an instruction. They're asking for the instruction of provocation. What is provocation? Well, we're going to read the actual instruction, but I'll give you the summary first. So self-defense law 101. If you're the first bad guy, if you're the first bad actor, you don't get self-defense. Right? You can't claim self-defense if you're the initial bad guy. This is also incidentally why someone in chat yesterday's question about, hey, does this mean every mass murderer has self-defense after the first shot was so asinine? It's a stupid question. Of course not. 
If you're the first bad actor, you don't get self-defense. You can't, you can't provoke your way into a self-defense claim. If the guy is attacking you because you're provoking it, then you don't get to claim the benefit of self-defense. Easy enough theory, right? So the most obvious version of this is you're the first one trying to actually assault them, right? You're the first one with a knife. You're the first one with a gun. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It just has to be sufficient legal provocation. So what is sufficient legal provocation? I'm so glad you asked. So I'm going to read you the model jury instruction from Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, like every other state, has model instructions because this is not the criminal justice's first rodeo, right? We have been through this before many times and many, many times in many, many cases. We've been to many, many appeals on jury instructions. And over the years and decades, we have things that are tried and true that have stood the test of time and become vetted through various legal processes. Now, the attorneys can ask for changes in the language, so they can ask, but you would assume they're going to use the model rules. So until they actually come out with final instructions, and I don't have those, we'll look at the model ones. So these may or may not be the ones they actually use, but these are the model ones. These are the standard ones. So let's read those because it's what we have to work with. Okay, so this is model rule 815 for those of you who care in the Wisconsin jury instructions, criminal. Privilege, self-defense, not available to one who provokes an attack, regaining the privilege. So yeah, you can't claim self-defense if you provoke, but there's ways to reclaim it after you provoke. So here is the instruction that's submitted to the jury, or probably will be submitted to the jury. You should also consider whether the defendant provoked the attack. A person who engages in unlawful conduct of a type likely to provoke others to attack and who does provoke an attack is not allowed to use or threaten force in self-defense against that attack. So you engage in unlawful conduct that is of a kind that would is likely to provoke. So it doesn't even have to provoke. It just has to be likely to provoke. And you're the first bad actor, right? So if it doesn't provoke, and sometimes later something happens, you still don't get the benefit, right? So if they, if, they, if they resist the initial provocation, and then at some point you try to pull out a firearm, you can't say, well, you know, when I pulled out the firearm, I didn't provoke. No, no, no. You lost it earlier when you tried to provoke and didn't. So it just has to be likely to provoke. How do you know if it's likely to provoke? I'm so glad you asked. You ask a jury. That's what juries are for. They're the ones that determine that. Okay, so you might want to know what do we mean by unlawful conduct of a type likely to provoke. And as you can see, there's a footnote. Let's read the footnote. So here's what the footnote says. The first paragraph of the instruction reflects the rule stated in the law, which provides that a person who engages in unlawful conduct of a type likely to provoke others loses the right to claim of privilege of self-defense. In State versus Bonet, of 1980, the court held that engaging in what would be considered disorderly conduct would constitute unlawful conduct. So mere disorderly conduct, mere disorderly conduct can be sufficient if the jury believes it's sufficient to be of a type likely to provoke others. So here's the problem. Here's the problem, right? You have a jury, and the, the prosecution is probably going to outright say it because the defense isn't going to stop them. And if they don't stop them, if they do stop them, then they'll just have to be a little bit more clever about them. But here's the, here's the clever version, right? They, they, they probably won't have to give, the prosecution probably won't have to give the clever version because they're just going to be able to sell, say it outright. But here's what the clever version looks like, all right? This is an outline, obviously. This isn't word perfect. It's just to illustrate the point, right? So here's something you would say, or expect to hear say in a clever version. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse came down to Kenosha. He drove here from across state lines. He brought with him a, an assault weapon, which is technically true, because I didn't say the assault weapon crossed state lines, now did I? I just implied it, because I'm a scummy prosecutor. Let's move on. He brought with him an assault weapon. He brought with him a 30-round magazine full of 5.56, 2.23, full metal jacket ammo. 
the same kind of ammo that is used by our military in war. He brought this with him on a sling to make sure it would be with him at all times and secure upon his person. He brought it into this situation because based on his own testimony, we know that he was aware of the incidents in Kenosha's from the day before. He was aware of the violent, destructive atmosphere. He came into this atmosphere knowingly, willfully, armed, prepared. Now you're going to hear from the judge some things about provocation. You need to consider whether or not whether or not Kyle Rittenhouse engaged in local, engaged in legal provocation, and so forth and so on. That's the clever version, right? Because I didn't say any of those things were legal provocation. I didn't say any of that. I just implied it by juxtaposition. I just implied it by juxtaposition. I didn't say those were legal provocations. I just implied it and let the jury come to the conclusion I want them to come to because I'm a scumbag prosecutor and I know how to construct a speech. Yeah. Now that's the clever version. The unclever version is, you know, he came here, he came, it was provocative. The unclever version is he came here to provoke. He came down here to provoke. He crossed state lines to provoke. He brought the rifle to provoke. He brought it into the disruption to provoke, and so he went into the he went into the streets to to end that fire, knowing it would provoke people. He went into the streets to to clean the graffiti, knowing it would provoke people. He heard from the people, protect your property, not the streets, and yet he went ever still into the proper into the streets to provoke constantly the people of Wisconsin, and they have responded. And now he has the utter gall to claim that he has the right of self defense. That is the unclever version. So take your pick between this. Yeah, yeah. Someone said, wow, that, that statement just dripped with scum, but you're probably really close, right? Yeah, I know it dripped with scum because I know how to do this. I know how to do this. I have gone to trial advocacy courses. I know how to construct this speech. I know how to do it. And that's just the rough outline. That I literally wrote just now off the top of my head. Hand to God, I had none of that prepared when I came. Hand to God, I had none of that prepared when I came. I just wrote that just now off the top of my head without even having to think about it because I know how to structure this. And then I take that and, you know, make it better. But, you know, I've got the basic outlines. I've got the basic outlines. So, you know, that's how to do it. And you're there. You're kind of there because you have the you have the argument that you want to have. Yeah. So now we have some additional instructions, by the way. These will probably be added as well. However, if the attack which falls causes a person to reasonably believe he or she is in imminent danger of great bodily harm, he or she may act lawfully in self-defense, but the person may not use or threaten force intended or likely to cause death unless he or she reasonably believes they've exhausted every other reasonable means to escape from otherwise avoid death or bodily harm. So you have to try to escape. Now you might argue that he did try to escape. He tried to flee, right? Well, we've got something for you there. A person who, who provokes an attack may regain the right to use or threaten force if the person in good faith withdraws from the fight and gives adequate notice of the withdrawal of the assailant. So you might say, oh, oh, okay, it's okay, because, you know, some point prior to this exchange with Rosenbaum, you know, some point prior to this exchange, he pointed the gun at him. We know that because Kyle himself t said so. Now, he's also said that's a lie, but we're going to disbelieve him because we can, and we're the jury, right? So you say, okay, that's fine. And when he was confronted by Rosenbaum, he attempted to retreat, but he didn't give notice. See? He, he's supposed to orally declare that he's retreating. He merely just tried to retreat physically, but he didn't follow the second condition. He didn't follow that second condition. He didn't give. What adequate notice did he give? When did he say, I'm withdrawing, I'm withdrawing? When did he say anything like that? So it doesn't apply. A person who provokes an attack, whether by lawful or unlawful conduct, with intent to use the attack as an excuse, loses it. So even in the case of purely lawful conduct, 
even in the case of purely lawful conduct, if you can show the person did the purely lawful conduct with an intent to provoke or the intent to cause, the intent to use that as an excuse, you're there. And then you go back into my dialogue regarding, you know, he came with the intent to provoke, he came with the intent to destroy, blah, 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 and all the rest of it, all those things, right? And even if they stay within the bounds of the law, even if they stay within the bounds of the law, because they themselves said, they themselves said at the jury instructions, and they're right, they're right. They, the, the prosecution said, we are not going to be, we're not saying that his mere presence is provocation. We're not saying his mere bringing a firearm is provocation. As a matter of law, is the subtext by the way, as a matter of law, we're not saying that. We're saying it's where he threatened the guy. We're saying where it's from this blurry image that he pointed at the guy and so forth and so on, right? So as a matter of legal, as a matter of legal backing, we're not arguing him being there is provocation. As a matter of legal backing, we're not arguing his being armed is there. But we can mention it. We can mention it. We can mention he came armed. We can mention he crossed state lines. We can mention he brought a, gun, a firearm with him, that it was an AR-15, semi-automatic, similar to the same kind that's used in war. And Call of Duty, if we want to go in that direction, although that's not my personal way to go, even in this hypothetical universe, because I'm not Jack Thompson. But, you know, you all those things. So the problem here is by getting this provocation instruction in, along with this really blurry, crappy image that is a major foundation for this excuse, right? Do they have a legal sufficiency? for provocation maybe would have been really nice though if the defense had not completely folded their argument at the end when the, the when the judge said hey you have anything else to say and, you know we'll take a pass what kind of what kind of crap is this we'll take a pass so you have to black pill pretty hard now because anyone who wanted to convict anyone who wanted to convict rittenhouse can just lean on this language just about as hard as they want because the language the language is open, right? Engages in unlawful conduct of a type likely to provoke. And then we know that includes disorderly conduct. And how easy is it for a juror who wants to convict? How is it easy for one of them to say, this was intent, this was disorderly conduct. He came with a gun to the middle of Kenosha, a city he doesn't even live in. He came here to provoke the crowd, which he knew would be hostile to him. That's why he came armed. He was prepared for the hostility. He knew the hostility. He knew there was a great risk of hostility. He came prepared for that hostility. And he executed upon that hostility. And as a, as a prosecutor, you know for damn sure, I'm saying the word executed, right? He executed on that hostility. And really stop right there, really drive that word home. He executed on that hostility because I know how to do this. I know how to do this, you know? Yeah, it's just like off the top of your head, you don't even have to try. So, you know, you take, you take those thematic elements, you take those thematic elements and you say, you know, and Rittenhouse even said he pointed this gun at this person. Now he's, he, he even said, he, now he's trying to take it back, but you know, why don't we believe his first statement? Was he lying then or lying now? Either way, he's a liar. He's not to be trusted. He obviously came with nefarious intent. You know, he came, he came spoiling for a fight. You know, that's why he was trying to all do all the stuff he was doing. So all those things, all those things. So yeah, this, this is not going well. So we, we, that is roughly the kind of argument you would expect from the prosecutor. Now they might have something different, but that's what I came up with. So that's why I'm blackpilling pretty hard because if you had jurors who were looking 
because the self-defense case was pretty good by letting that provocation instruction in based on some really shit evidence that shouldn't have been admitted because it, it because it shouldn't be admitted under the rules of evidence because that picture is not a true and accurate representation of what happened because they have no idea if it's true and accurate because they have no idea how it was manipulated their own expert doesn't know so the the, the exhibit being admitted is an error this basis for it is error, but now you're there, and now you're looking at convictions. If not to the top count of murder in the first degree, then to a lesser count. So, you know, now of course, it's likely, it's also possible that Binger is gonna screw this up in closing, but to be fair, to be fair, his opening argument was really good. It was really good. I said so as much. I know, because I was criticized for it extensively. So Binger may not be great on direct. Binger may not be good on cross, but we know he was good on open. And so we would have every reason to believe he'll be good on, on close. So he might hand the, the, to the defense, but if he's as good on close as he was on open, he's where he needs to be. And your probability, especially with lesser included penalties your your penalty, your possibility with lesser included are looking really good now it, the 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 now there is one saving possibility here and it, it's a bit of a save we already know that the uh curfew violation has been thrown out it looks like the illegal possession charge is going to be thrown out because one of the elements for it to be illegal possession is that the gun has to be a short barrel rifle, which means it has to have a barrel less than 18 inches or it has to, or is it 16? I think it's, well, it's one of the two. I think it's less than 18. And it has to have a total length less than 24 inches. But the prosecution never asked any of its witnesses how long the gun was. They asked, and they asked one expert, they asked one of their, their defense, uh, one of their uh, police persons, hey, is this a legal gun? And the, he said, no. But he didn't provide any factual basis for it. So if the judge is a good judge, there is not sufficient, there is not sufficient evidence to allow the illegal possession charge to go to the jury. So if the judge throws out the illegal possession charge, he has to tell the jury about it and be like, okay, so the illegal possession charge is no longer before you. So now that's one less nail in Kyle's coffin because now it's not an illegal firearm right that would be another thing that they can argue about because that's one of the charges right he brought an illegal firearm with him so now it's no longer an illegal firearm so that helps a little bit and it seems like the judge wants to get there it seems like he wants to go there so it seems like we're going to get that on monday morning and dismissal of that charge so that helps but still my friends i would be very uh, remiss if i didn't tell you that we're looking at some real problems on the top counts, either proper or as to their lesser included. So things are not looking really good at all. So I, I, you know, that's just the assessment. Now, this could somehow change between now and Monday. We don't have the final jury instructions yet. Let me just refresh to see if there's final jury instructions on the docket yet. The proposals were on the docket. No, they're not yet. The proposals from both uh, both the defense and prosecution on the jury instructions are on the docket, but there has not been a finalized set of jury instructions yet. So depending, maybe the jury instructions will somehow improve. Maybe he'll reconsider the, uh, the, the provocation charge, although I would be amazed, honestly, if he does. Um, maybe he'll throw out the reckless endangerment charge, although I'd be amazed if he does. So I think at this point, your odds... Like we were giving 95% odds yesterday. Anyone remember that? Anyone remember how nice it was yesterday when we were giving like 95% odds for Kyle to be found not guilty or for a mistrial? I think our odds just dra dra dropped rapidly. Because not only do we have the lesser included problem, we now have, which allows the jury to reach a compromise verdict, we now have this provocation factor and there's enough there for a jury to be misled to find provocation and to reach some sort of compromise verdict. So I think your odds of Kyle being found guilty of the top counts or some lesser included version of the top counts is now 
Jeez, I mean, I I don't even know where to cut the numbers. But if you believe if you believe Barnes is uh, probabilities of the Kenosha jury at the default, which is two thirds default against Kyle at the start, if you believe those numbers, you are now leaning for a conviction instead of an acquittal. So I don't know that I feel really comfortable giving a real high percentage on that because the videos obviously are a thing. But the, the, you know, with a little bit of magic and a little bit of being misled and a little bit of silvery tongue and a little bit of the right phrasing and putting the right ideas in the jury's mind, you are now looking at a conviction as a more likely than not outcome, either a murder in the first degree or some lesser penalty. But either way, you're talking about years and decades in jail. I base those probabilities, of course, off the default jury demographics, which Barnes provided information of. Apparently, Kenosha is one of the most favorable jurisdictions. It's one of the most favorable jurisdictions for Kyle, and even they are two-thirds as the starting point against Kyle, as the most favorable. So at this point, you'd have to say it's more likely than not that you're looking at a conviction or a mistrial. And of those, I think you're looking at more likely conviction, particularly with particularly with the lesser included. I think your I think your odds of looking at a compromise verdict where they go for a lesser included as some sort of compromise is it may be the most probable outcome. And I think the idea that Kyle's coming away from this scot free is now no longer likely than not. And I want to point out this is all because his defense lawyers are massive fuck ups. His defense lawyers blows, particularly Richards. Saravici is fine. He might be better than fine. Richards sucks ass. If any of you guys have been watching the stream with me and Nick and everyone else, you know that we all think the same. Richards blows. He completely blows. He made a major misstep today by not pressing the argument and just being like, okay, I have nothing more to say, judge. I mean, that's unforgivable. It's inexcusable. He screwed up in allowing that exhibit to be part of the record. It shouldn't be part of the record because it's not a true and accurate depiction of what occurred. It's manipulated. He screwed up at so many points in the trial by allowing so much of the, of the prosecution to get away with so much. The prosecution has been... They've, they've sucked too, but his own defense lawyers have really sucked ass. They've sucked ass. It's been horrible. So if this goes down, uh, if this goes down, I, I don't think, again, I don't think it's an attack on self-defense, although it might be spun that way. I don't think it's an attack on assault rifles, although it will for sure be spun that way. You can guarantee. But, you know, it will, it's because his lawyers suck ass and they blow. Richard sucks. Richard sucks. And he is even more responsible than the prosecutor at this point for putting his client in jail. Seriously. Richards is more responsible than the prosecutor for putting his client in jail. If that occurs. It is a shit show travesty. And I don't know what the Court of Appeals will do anymore. I don't know what the Court of Appeals will do anymore. Kyle's best hope on appeal is inadequate assistance of counsel at this point. Because, because that evidence is in. So unless the, unless the court, so to say that evidence shouldn't come in, right clear error clear error clear error is really fucking hard right the judge might have been wrong but the judge being wrong and the judge committing a clear error are definitely not the same thing there's a lot of daylight between wrong and clear error so you have to go with more than he was wrong to let in that evidence and he went through it thoroughly and he got bamboozled and I'm not sure the Court of Appeals can conclude clearer. I'm not sure they can get there. 
I'm not sure they can get to clear error for the provocation instruction. And once the, once the provocation instruction's in place, the Court of Appeals is going to be like, well, the, he did say that he pointed it at the guy. The jury was entitled to believe that. They do have this video that the, the prosecution said it showed the rifle being pointed at. I guess the jury must have come to the same conclusion, right? Because we're looking at the evidence in the light most favorable to the verdict on appeal, right? It's not innocent till proven guilty anymore. Once he's convicted, that's over now. Innocent till proven guilty is over once he's convicted. That's over now. Now we interpret things in light of the verdict. He's guilty. He's guilty. That's your baseline state. And is there any way for the jury to get there? And can the, and the, and can the Court of Appeals cobble together one? Probably. That's how bad the provocation instruction is. It's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. It's not enough to merely disagree with the trial judge. You need more, quite a bit more. So your best hope is probably ineffective assistance of counsel because of all the many, 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 many failures to object to, but you know, again, again, we've even seen cases with courts saying falling asleep is not enough for the defense lawyer. Even if they fall asleep is not necessarily enough. We've seen cases going the other way, but it usually takes quite a lot. It takes a lot for ineffective assistance of counsel. So I wouldn't keep my fingers crossed. And of course, in the meantime, Kyle is serving jail, or I should say prison, in a maximum security prison somewhere. Because his defense lawyers suck ass. And can you throw uh, Richards under ineffective assistance but not Sharif C? Nope. You sure can't. You know? I, I don't, you know? You sure can't. Sharice was there, so you have to say Sharice's incompetent too. Right? It's ugly. It's ugly. Kevin Bacon said, Did we watch the same trial? What are you implying he's guilty of? How much of this have you watched, Kevin? I mean ranting for 30 minutes. How much how much have you been watching? I've I've tried to explain this in some laborious detail that the problem is the provocation instruction the jury can the jury probably has enough to get to where they want to be and so then you're looking at guilty of first degree murder because if because if you find provocation if you find provocation self defense is gone if you find provocation self defense is gone so you don't have self defense anymore so now you have murder in the first degree. Just great, just great. And now with this provocation instruction in place, if the if the prosecution says the says the right honey words and puts them together in the right honeyed order, you have a problem, ma'am. You have a problem. A real problem. Let me answer some questions from you. And the bot. 667 MD says, given how what we know about the jury instructions now, how would you as a defense lawyer go on the attack during closing to try to salvage this? Yeah, it's 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 rough for the defense. The defense has to put on a I don't see how they cannot put on a close. They have to put on a close. Um oh by the way, while I'm thinking about it before I get to the instruction before I get to your questions, because somehow it slipped my mind. And I don't even know how that's possible because it goes into my theme of the defense lawyer suck ass. The defense did not move for a directed verdict. Now, it's been suggested that they orally did make a motion for a directed verdict previously, 
and the judge said they would consider it, which kind of seems like it could be true. But even if it is true, they didn't mention it today. They didn't start the hearing with, let's, it, the judge didn't say, the judge didn't say, let's do jury instructions. And then the defense said, how about instead of jury instructions, we do a motion for a directed verdict. Didn't happen. We didn't get to the end and it says, oh no, I'm ready to wrap up. It says, well, how about instead of wrapping up, how about a motion for a directed verdict? Defense never brought it up. Never brought it up. I don't know if they're looking to try to file it in papers for Monday, but they never brought it up. They didn't renew the objection, even assuming they made the objection before, which is not 100% clear to be quite honest, even assuming they made the objection before, they didn't renew the objection. And if you don't renew it, you can lose it. That objection could go bye-bye, you know? That objection can go bye-bye. So his lawyers at no point today mentions the words dismissal with prejudice, judgment as a matter of law, directed verdict. Didn't mention those things. Didn't mention those things. They didn't come with a written motion. I could have written up a motion. It might not be the best motion ever, but I could write up a couple pages overnight you know, on the major themes, write up a couple pages of a motion. Probably do more than that, to be quite honest, because my client's life is on the line, but I could write up a couple pages without thinking about it too hard. Never brought it up. John Boyle says, no breaking voted clearly shows Kyle did not raise his gun. Doesn't matter, my friend. Doesn't matter, John. I don't, I doesn't matter, John. I hate I hate to break it to you over here, John. Um, John says, and I'm not I'm not trying to give John a hard time, so I should have rephrased that. I'm sorry, John. I actually gave John a hard time, and that's not that was my fault. John says 499. New breaking video clearly shows Kyle did not raise his gun before Rosenbaum chases him. Pictures and video on Jack Brosek's Twitter. Well, that's really interesting and all, John. But unfortunately, Jack Brosek's Twitter is not part of the record and the evidence is closed. Jack Brosek's Twitter is not part of the record. And the evidence is closed. So the pictures and video on Jack Brosek's Twitter do not legally exist. They don't exist. All right, let's read some stuff. Tin Weasel says, have you seen Darth Crypto's video analysis? If so, any comments? No, I haven't seen it and no, it doesn't matter because Darth, videos, Darth Crypto's video analysis are not part of the record, so they don't legally exist. Chaos Strategy says, can Kyle fire his, defense, fire his defense lawyers and hire new ones just for the closing? Sure, with the court's permission, and as long as they're ready to go without delay, then sure, they can do that. I don't know who would take it up at this point because I don't, I know I don't want a piece of that pile of shit. Because if I take, if I, if I, if you subbed out me, right, if you asked me to do it, now suddenly I'm part of counsel, right? So certainly when you're suing for ineffective assistance of counsel, guess who you're suing? Me, right? So it's like, oh, would you take over the closing argument if Kyle asked you to? Nope, not a chance in hell. Because Kyle's gonna have to sue for ineffective assistance of counsel. And guess who his counsel is? No, yeah, good luck on finding someone for that. SSRMY says, for those of us not in the United States, could you please give us a quick run through a permutation in terms of jury votes? What ratio is required for guilty, not guilty, hung jury and retrial? Well, that's easy. For either guilty or not guilty, you need 12 to zero. You need unanimous. For guilty or not guilty, you need 12 to zero. You need a unanimous jury. You need 100%. 
for guilty or not guilty. Anything else is a hung jury. And the jury can reach conclusions on some verdicts and not re reach conclusions on other verdicts. So they can come back with partial verdicts. You know, we have a partial verdict. We have, we have a verdict on counts one, three, and five, but not two, four, and six. You know? So yeah, you need, you need 12 to zero either way. Otherwise, it's a hung jury. So Kyle only needs one. Kyle only needs one for a hung jury. So, you know, hold your breath deeply. Mickey197799 says, why didn't the judge sequester the jury before the governor of Wisconsin activated the National Guard? I don't know. I'm not the judge. Peter said, please go rest. I heard how black pill today made you. Please don't do this now. Too late, Peter. Lisa Barrarelli says, I'm subscribed, but this didn't show up my stream. Subscribe more. JS says, can the defense file dispositive motions on Monday before the jury goes to deliberations? I honest to God don't know. I honest to God don't know. It might be too late. I don't know the law in Wisconsin that well procedurally. It might be too late. And even if you can, you're going to piss off the judge because that was really what was today was for, right? All that stuff for all the, all the hangar so much. I, I don't know. The judge might not take the motion. He might, it might not be timely on Monday. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me. J man 77 said during Kyle's testimony, he said that Sedansky showed the gun to Kyle and shall get him, kill him. Can this make any difference if it comes up Monday? Sure. Anything can make a difference if it comes up Monday, right? I'm just trying to forecast the forecast, given the jury instructions, you know, given the jury instructions, given the way they can be read, given the, uh, the starting demographics of the jury as per Barnes, you know, I'm trying to make some reasonable extrapolations. The reasonable extrapolations are not looking super promising. Of course, anything's possible. He could walk free, right? I mean, as possible. I mean, I haven't said it's like 95% to be guilty or mistrial. I haven't said it's that high. I just said, you know, we're looking, it's more likely than not. So there's, there's still a decent chance it could be not guilty across the board. It's just not the 95% it was yesterday. Uh, Elidian says, is the picture available anywhere? I can't seem to find it. Yeah, probably if I dug it up on Twitter somewhere. Uh, Mr. Mike Mysterio says, in the photo, you can clearly see Waldo. Right. Pizza Man Town, so you think the two photos are even the same? They look different to me. I, I don't, I think one was cropped and one wasn't. I don't, honest to God, know. Lucifer himself says, given the prosecutor's piss poor job, which I'm sure the judge sees, what's the probability of the judge overruling the jury should they find him guilty? You would have to estimate it. It's more, it's higher than not. But with the provocation instruction in place, I don't know how this judge plays it. I don't know how this judge plays it. Because with the provocation instruction in place, there's probably sufficient information for the jury to reach guilty. They'd have to ignore a shit ton of stuff to do it, but it's probably doable. JS says, how likely is the jury to give substantial weight to the enhanced photo if it's so unclear? If, if, there, if there are people in the jury looking to convict, I imagine they're going to give it a lot of weight. The jury might look at it and toss it aside, but you know, if someone's looking to convict, I think they've got the pieces. Jason Davis says, don't be too upset but Kyle is an incel punk anyway. I'm always upset. I'm always upset when lawyers do a piss poor job. It makes me angry. Alpha Fox Adams says, betting the judge won't be granting any type of judgment as a matter of law. That's a fair assessment, but it doesn't matter. You should do it anyway. Nicholas Sheen says, don't you think this case, don't, do you think this case still doesn't affect self-defense law overall? As a matter of law, it doesn't know. It doesn't know as a matter of law. It just means his it just means his lawyers suck. Will this be a rallying basis for some legislature somewhere to change the law? Sure, but it's not legal, right? So I don't see any legal thing that will change. But will Congress look to ban assault weapons? Will they use this as a prelude? It might affect it in that sense. Ryan Milliam says, with a lesser provocation charge, well, provocation impacts all of it. It's The provocation isn't in itself a lesser charge. Provocation just nullifies def the defense on everything. In your professional opinion, is this going to change the outcome of the trial? Yep. Trish says, you go, you're on fire. This, this trial is on fire. 
Ben Gerber says, how fucked up is Kyle if Richards is the one delivering the closing argument for the defense? Pretty fucked up. Pretty fucked up. He, I, 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 you know, I've been told I'm wrong. I've been told I'm a crazy man th there, because there are people out there who think Richard's opening statement was wonderful and really good and really solid and really captured the attention. I've been told by people on Twitter, I've been told by people in Nick's chat that, you know, I'm a crazy man. That was a great opening statement by the defense. Okay. Um, no. TTM says, have you begun writing your appeal brief for Kyle? Yes, in my head. Right? In the same way that I'm writing the prosecution's closing arguments, I'm writing the defense's closing arguments in my head. I'm writing the appeal brief in my head. So, yeah, I, I already have part of his appeal brief written in my head because I just think that way. Rich White says, this would be extremely misleading for the prosecution to say he used the ammo the military used in war. Well, you know, so what? What's your point? David Swords, okay, they, they don't have to say it was, the, they don't have to say it was used in war. They can say it's of the same kind used in war, right? So you, you, you say, okay, it's not the same used in war. Fine. It's the same kind it's used in war. I fixed the problem, right? Without changing really anything. So it doesn't matter. David Sorson says, was there evidence that the act of raising the gun was unlawful? E yeah, because there wasn't provocation at that point, so it would be unlawful if you assume he was pointing at somebody. Carly says, don't you think a known m molester's picks the smallest perpin with baby face is important relative? It would be nice if the jury knew that it was a child molester, but they don't know that. Do I think it's important and relevant to the jury that child molester picks the smallest purpose person with a baby face? No, I don't think it's either important or relevant to the jury because the jury doesn't know. Ben Gerber says, an adequate notice of treat must be a notarized letter. Chris Perry says he beat up a girl the week before. They don't know that either, incidentally, Chris. And also, it's not relevant to the question at hand, strictly speaking, relevantly. It's all because that's propensity evidence, right? So even if you assume it as a given, for the same reason that the jury doesn't know about the child molesting, it's the same exact reason. Um, you, you can't use propensity evidence. You can't use because he did this in the past, he's more likely to do it now. That swings both ways. So you can't mention he's a child molester, therefore he's more likely to be doing a legal thing now because that's propensity. For the exact same reason, you can't bring up, well, he assaulted uh, someone a week before. So therefore, he's assaulting someone else. Propensity evidence. It's, 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 it's not proper for a jury. Uh, wouldn't friendly, friendly, because they're adequate notice of retreat. Um, that's a tough sell. But I don't have anything better. And as the defense lawyer, I really don't want to be going down that road if I don't have to. Because I have to concede the initial premise. Right. In order for me to make that argument as a defense lawyer that's adequate notice of retreat, I basically have to concede that Kyle was a bad actor in the first place, and I really don't want to do that. So I, I don't know how I could incorporate that. I'd have to think about that. Ferens Wolf said, I'll say it again. I think if he gets a mistrial and gets to do it again, you and Barnes would be a dream team. I'm happy to be second chair to Barnes. I'm happy to be second chair to Barnes. Because I can do a lot of this stuff in my head. And yeah, and I know Barnes can just from pure experience. Conrad Jasky says, I might have missed it, just got here, but did you see the new footage on Twitter? Someone found of Colin Slensky's. No, I didn't see it. No, it doesn't matter because it's not part of the record, so legally it doesn't exist. Kyle claims he went as a medic, not a combat medic. I think you misunderstood my point. Trezier said, ooh, nice reference to the early knots. Good old Jack, GTA is a murder simulator. It makes you a psych psychopath, mass murderer Thompson. Gotta bring out those Jack Thompson references, man. Matthew Legos says, when the language is so open, you can make it anything you want. You have a problem as defense. Truth? Joe's Auto Electric says, why is the judge not declared a mistrial with prejudice after Kyle's rights were violated? Well, apparently not for the least of reasons, because the defense has failed to mention it again. So I don't know if the judge forgot or something. I don't know if the judge planned to amb ambush him on Monday, but, you know... You might lose that art. You might lose that on appeal. You might lose that on appeal. You know, you can try to raise that on appeal, 
But the response from the state will be, well, you know, you didn't renew the objection, you lost it. You didn't preserve the objection, to use the technically correct term, you didn't preserve the objection. And they might be right. David Sorson says, if the illegal possession charge is thrown out, is there any other evidence that raising the gun was either unlawful or a lawful act with intent to provoke? Yes. At the point that he did it initially, at the point he did it initially, there was no provocation at that point. You're referring to like the earlier scene. So I, yes, I think. Con Grieve says, since the judge mentioned having full metal jock, it might show utter disregard for life. What does that mean for future cases? Don't use full metal jacket, I guess. Matthew Lajo says, can you as a defense attorney on closing point out the charges were dropped? Sure. Yeah, I can point out charges were dropped. Why not? This old guy says, can the judge reverse his decision before Monday? Sure. Wouldn't bank on it. Ben Gerber says, if the juror is a trier of fact, can't they just mention the length of the barrel to determine if the gun possession charge is real or bunk? Well, I suppose they could, but they don't have a ruler. They don't have a ruler because a ruler is not part of the evidence. So, no. Radiant Samson said hello. Ken Greery says, when people might have a modified gun or use certain ammo for defense. I don't know what that means. Annoy said, what defense lawyer would close? Your guess is as good as mine, but Richard sounds about right. Uh, someone asked again about Jack Pazbalif block stuff from earlier. No, I didn't see it. No, it doesn't matter. It's not part of the record. It legally doesn't exist. Canned Jam says, I think we need to realize the jury didn't witness anything today. The state needs to approve provocation. There's no evidence. A good closing deals this case. Seals this case. There is evidence of provocation. There's evidence. It's not great. It's not, you have, what evidence do you have of provocation? Well, of Kyle himself saying that he pointed a gun at somebody, which implies provocation. And you also have uh, Kyle as a liar, because now he says that he lied about that, so you got that, which discredits everything he says. And apparently he pointed his gun at uh, someone else that we have on video. So uh, there's some evidence of provocation. Uh, it's not great, but it's there. If you want to, if you want to squint real hard, it's there. Taunt Dragon says, what was Mr. Bicep? Did he even allow someone that testified in trial like this to go on and talk about before it's over? Mr. Bicep is an idiot. But unless they move to reopen the case to reintroduce that stuff, which I think the judge would be extremely loath to do, that's not coming in either. Can I write an amicus brief in a criminal trial? Technically speaking, yes, I can, but it won't do me any good. Lauren Myers says, if we talk about the provocation instruction Barnes posted an hour ago on Locals, I don't know what instruction Barnes posted. I read the model rule, so I hopefully that's the same one Barnes posted. I couldn't speak to that. Is it only one third against Kyle according to Barnes? I thought it was two thirds, but maybe I misunderstood Barnes. I thought it was two thirds, according to Barnes, but maybe I misunderstood him. Is Kyle's convicted? Could he appeal due to ineffective assistance of counsel? Yes, and it's probably his best hope, and even then, it isn't great. Uh, is it forbidden to show any photo of Rittenhouse with white supremacy? Yes, the photograph of him in the bar has been excluded. I understand he's judged by fact, but isn't it relevant? No, it's not relevant. It's been excluded. Kenneth Williams said, would it be good of Kyle to object today? Probably, since he has the apparently the unilateral basis to object but he's getting bad advice from his counsel not to object, as far as I can tell. Tin Weasel said, Binger extracted a specific frame to create the lie that Kyle was pointing his gun. If this can be shown, wouldn't it be a big deal? Well, it's not a lie. I mean, that's what he says it says, right? So you can judge the truth or falsity of it based on your own eyes. So he says this frame shows something. Do you think it shows something or not? It's a Rorschach test. So, you know. Richard Fitzwell, I, I'm sure he picked the frame that was the most damning. If your question is, did he pick the frame that was most damning? Sure. Richard Fitzwell says, I cannot understand why they put Kyle on the stand. The defense is dumb. Rich says, if your AC system needs a new fan, you can replace it with Richard's. Richard's doesn't work. Richard says, why they call him as witness? Who? Rating and Samus says, if Kyle's convicted, what are the appellate chances? Not great. Not great. 
What are your thoughts on Rittenhouse's chance of an appeal based on incompetent defense? Not great. Can the judge change the ruling if he sees it as unfair? Yes, the judge can change the ruling if he sees it as unfair. The judge may be his last hope in all this equation. Uh, Z X U K C U N I T says, they do have video that debunks the provocation claim. Don't you think they're gonna use it? What video do you mean? If it's not part of the record, they can't use it. It doesn't exist. David Hamilton says 16 barrel for rifle, 18 for shotgun. Thank you for the correction. Crazy Horse says, Tony Arabs called up the National Guard, which could be construed as a political move. They should have already been there. I have no comment on that because you can draw your own conclusions. Danielle, Daniela said, Richards let his ego get in the way. You're that or is he just incompetent? I think he's incompetent. He never says about any trials he's ever won. How this guy picked, how Kyle got picked this guy is beyond all understanding. Nary says, how much can a witness push back against a lawyer like Binger on cross when it's misled? If asked yes or no, but the true and honest answer begins with it depends. They can push back. They can push back and then it depends on the judge in terms of the amount of latitude. So really it's a question of what does the judge allow to be quite honest. Internet commentary says you can go over the standard and scope of review. Yeah, being wrong versus clear, plain, manifest error. Well, it's a little hard to summarize, but basically for clear, plain, manifest error, you are saying, did the judge do something that that is completely unsupported? Is that no reasonable, it's not just a mere, a mere disagreement. It's not a mere, I do things differently. It's that the judge, what the judge does has no support at all. If there's any support for the judge, it stands. And yeah. Uh, Murray says, can Sharif see objective Richard doesn't or he does he have to get along? I, I think Sharif see technically can. He can, but because he's second chair, he probably has an agreement not to. So technically speaking, he can. But he's probably not supposed to because of their arrangement. Um, which would be very, very typical in a trial, by the way. Um, Drazar says, so you're saying this can end like any other case where the result was obviously wrong, but the court, court, court of appeals can rule against it because it's not in their purview. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the standards on, I mean, the standards on appeal are different than the standards of trial. So, yeah, I mean, the court of appeals is asking different questions. You know, what happens at trial matters. Yeah. Matthew says, could he still appeal on the grounds the prosecution acted improperly as well? With respect to the uh, Fifth Amendment issues, that issue might be waived. You could, I think there's a credible argument that that issue has not been preserved at this point. Internet Commentator says, can you throw Richards under the bus, but not Shrifty? No. Kevin says, did we watch the same trial? Yes, I answered that. Is there a possible motion will be to dismiss on Monday? It's possible. I wouldn't expect it, and I'm not sure it's timely. Duck U says, isn't this all assuming the jury wants to find him guilty? I think I said as much. Marie Claire says, why didn't Shrifty jump on, up and down? It's unprofessional. Uh, Dan, Dan, Daniel says, in closing, is defense allowed to point out any rhetorical tactics the prosecution's using? Sure. Absolutely. They're used to say, here are some rhetorical tricks. They can do that. Undercover hypocrisy. How and why is it okay for the prosecution to spin a BS narrative with no proof and just get away with it? They have a scintilla of proof. It, it's not much, but it's, it's a scintilla. Jay says, do you think it really matters? Even everyone has decided how they feel. It doesn't matter what the jury instruction is going to be. Well, I guess that's true. I was just pointing out the jury instruction gives them legal cover to get to where they want to be. Excuse me. Excuse me. Milo Raison says, would Kyle shooting Rosenbaum be considered provocation for Anthony Huber to try to disarm him? Yes, it would, but that doesn't necessarily negate Kyle's claim because if he acted in self-defense it's not legal provocation so but from if you mean from his point of view yes they both probably had a valid self-defense claim at the same time internet commentator says can the appeal court just sua sponte say this is an effing mess nope the king of casual says good thing evers is out this year i don't know what that is give her access for those who have been watching the whole thing and everyone we know what happens in court do you feel something sinister is behind the scenes I feel Richard sucks ass. 
I feel like Richard sucks ass. Never assigned to malice what can be assigned to incompetence. And although I have on one or two occasions broken that rule, this is not going to be one of those times. I think Richard sucks. Aaron E. says, does it matter the video actually in the record shows the thing Binger says in Callahan holding a gun is the mirror of the vehicle? Ask the jury what it is. Ask the jury what it is. Is Shrifty limited as to what he could do without Richard's buy-in? As a matter of practice, yes. Yeah, he's second chair, so he is limited as a matter of practice. Jay says, simple... Relax, repeat. I believe the jury can see Rosenbaum's demeanor and actions for where they are. Even if Kara pointed his gun, it doesn't quite reach reasonable doubt of provocation. Uh, if we get a mistrial, a new trial is brought against Kyle. Can they bring in new evidence? Yes. Is it a brand new trial? Yes. We start over from square zero. We start over completely anew and everything is back up for grabs all over again. Including, for example, hire a different defense lawyer. Liz M said, what did they say today about a, a, getting an email from, about a jury? Uh, they handled it, but I didn't see how it was resolved. Jacob said, where can we find the proposed jury instructions? The proposed jury instructions are on the docket. You have to pay for them. Um, if you want to just look at uh, model instructions, then just type model jury instructions, Wisconsin. And they'll get you to pretty much where they want to be. The formal ones are on the docket. When there are actual ones that are finalized, I'll cover that, which is probably going to be Monday night, assuming the jury doesn't come back on Monday. MSNBC has a video saying Kyle shot 60 rounds. That would be impressive. Uh, Bro Kila says, where did all Kyle's defense go? Defense funds go? I don't know. Uh, Nick G says, what do you think of the jury acting disinterested and stop taking notes? Maybe they made up their mind. So maybe, maybe they won't be swayed by any of this stuff, but I wouldn't bank on it. Nerd Angle says, is the judge's comments on prosecution disrespecting, disparaging Kyle? for his Fifth Amendment's rights. And what he said couldn't be said, seen anything in the video. Helpful on appeal? He may, I think the Fifth Amendment issue might be waived for failure to preserve it. And uh, the judge's comments that about not seeing anything in the video, that's not gonna be brought to the jury's intention. King of Casuals says, the only thing that gives me hope is you, uh, us, us Wisconsin. King of Casuals, only thing reassuring is Wisconsinites are stubborn if one good juror is out there. Fair. Fair. If Kyle if Kyle gets a mistrial or a not guilty verdict, it is not because of his defense lawyers, although I'm sure they'll take all the credit ever. Uh, Curious Z says, how legal is it for Bicep Guy to go on Good Morning America? It's totally legal. It's totally legal. He's not barred from talking about the case. He can do that. It's really dumb, but he can. Dragon's play said, do you think the defense dropped the ball because of intentional sabotage reasons? Or more so because the fear is open and shut? I think Richard sucks. I think Richard's is bad. Uh, Phillips said, what's provocation clause? We discussed that, go back to earlier in the stream. Um, John Miranda says, why can the jury not be told Rosenbaum went directly to Kenosha after being released from mental institution? Because it's unduly prejudicial. Uh, it, it, it's a propensity argument. Another man's treasure, Lakelands, also because, also because it's nothing Kyle knew. Kyle can only rely on the things he knew. So Kyle can rely on Rosenbaum's actions, but he can't rely on the fact that he went to a mental institution because he doesn't know that. So it, it, that's why, those two reasons. Another man's treasure said, why did the prosecution not try to portray Huber and Gross as heroes? Well, because if they try to go and say they're heroes, that's character evidence. And once they open the character evidence door, choo-choo, MFers, it's all coming in. So that's why they didn't portray them as heroes, because the defense can say, how about not heroes? And here's 8,000 reasons why. Phil H. says, doesn't self-defense require imminent threat? Yes. If pointing a gun at Zeminski provoked Rosenbaum, didn't the threat disappear when Rosenbaum written house moved on? Within the next couple seconds? No, because if no, because if you could you could infer that Rosenbaum perceived Kyle as a threat to others if he saw it and he was trying to stop him, which would be valid. A vortex said, "Do you think Kyle's attorneys are thinking more about the money? I think they're incompetent." Marie says, "Can Trisky go against Richards? No, they're on the same team." 
Rip Drive says, is Kyle allowed to watch media or go on social during the trial? Uh, is he allowed to? I honestly don't know if he's allowed to or not. I would not recommend it. Daniel says, in closing, would the defense be allowed to address any of the prosecution's slimy tactics? Yes, they can bring all that up. That's fine. Apparently, I'm supposed to tell chat to watch for an important announcement. I don't know what that is, but okay. Stephanie says I'm supposed to tell chat to watch for an important announcement. Okay. I I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't know what this is. I'm. I'm not. I. I don't know what this is. You know. I, I'm the I'm the owner of the channel. I should probably have a decent idea what the important announcement is going to be. Anyways, never mind. Um, why does the prosecution get rebuttal off defense closing? Because the prosecution has the burden of proof, so they get the last word. Where's the bigger dumpster file in this trial or Kenosha a year ago? In this trial. Is Rosenbaum defense justified because he reached for Kyle's gun? I don't understand the question. How is provocation not subjective, especially considering environmental considerations? It might be subjective. How do you know if there's provocation? Ask the jury. Um, JS says, who can bring complaint to disciplinary board for prosecutorial misconduct? Anyone can. JJ Rizzle says, I like to tear your take on Kyle saying I didn't intend to kill them. I've always been told that if you have to shoot, you should say you intended to kill. No. Who told you that? No, 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 no. You always say you intend to stop the threat. No, we never say you intend to kill. No, 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 no. No, his answer was perfect. Okay. Where was I? Any chance of a mistrial? They have to ask for it. Um, Aspire Place says, what's your personal opinion? Do you think innocence in the matter of self-defense or guilt for murder? Um, how much damage do you think is done to two-way in self-defense if Kyle's found guilty? None, except as might be done through legislative action. Uh, is it really valid to argue carrying a weapon is planning a homicide? Oh, sure, of course. 
Yeah. I mean, is it valid to argue carrying a weapon is planning a homicide? Sure. Why not? It might be part of a part of a thing that would uh, that would be the basis of that. David Hamilton says, is there any legal argument the governor activating the National Guard could influence the jury? I don't know. Washington Jail Daily says, while I was watching the case, the only person I saw Uh, do you think the defense dropped the ball on purpose or are they just that bad? I don't know. Where it all calls defense money go? I don't know. Can defense tell the jury there's clear image they chose not to use? If they have the images to show them, yes. That'd be fine. Uh, since the gun is serialized, the weapon length and barrels tied to it might be in the record. It's not. Uh, Count Vinian says, weren't the images admitted to at the end with witness, without a witness? They weren't admitted. They were technically published. I counted it. I covered it yesterday. Um, Benjamin Jeffrey says, I think trial should restart. You and everyone else are Rakita stream should replace Twiddledee and Twiddledum. Fair. When listening to Banger Close, would you recommend ice pick in my ears to smooth his condescending tone? Not particularly, no. There's, maybe earmuffs would be better. Washington Daily says, in McGinnis' video, Balch had the gun pointed at Yellow Pants and Kyle was already walking away from Yellow Pants. Okay. Annoy says, do defense lawyers share Kyle the stark reality that the charges are going to prison are fairly likely given their fuck-ups? That assumes that they know that they're effing up. This is a joke of justice system that doesn't have a clue on guns. That might be true. That's why we have experts. Would have been nice if they'd called some. Lewis Paralegal says, the video does not show the victim accused of provoking. Prosecutors state the victim cannot be seen in the video. Provoking other people, which is, you know, so it might be part of a pattern of provoking. Um, 4, 420 Atheists has said, how could this happen? The picture they're using as evidence for provocation is mostly computer generated. Because the defense sucks. Michael says, as JNOV is given a state appeals, is Kyle considered innocent in the appeal? Yes. And it would be it would be basically impossible for the for the state to win an appeal. The 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 the, the judge has incredibly wide discretion. So I, I don't know. I mean they can try to appeal. I just cannot imagine a basis on which they would be successful. Because the, 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 the judge has so much discretion when it comes to it. I, it would be amazing. It could appeal successfully. I'm not sure there's anything in law that would support them. Mike Hodges says the crappy picture at the end looks to be actually be enlargement of a strap. It could be anything. It could be a strap. It could be a gun. It could be a polar bear. I don't know. It could be so many things. Uh, Brooke Kella says, you're, so you're telling me someone picked these lawyers for them, for him. I don't know who picked the lawyers, whether it was him or someone else. Either way, they suck. Pirate Fan says, do you think Rittenhouse walks? Nope. Jack Problex has new fit vidage showing the better view of the blurred image. Once again, Jack Problex video is not part of the record. It does not exist. It does not exist, so it doesn't matter. It's not part of the record. Johnny says, is anyone more lucky than Binger? Somehow he managed to fall off the stairs rather than down. And there's some super chats that I've been neglecting for a little while. So let me do some, some super chats. $5 from Butts World Man. Prosecution has the final word in closing. Right. Then Kyle's done for. I hate this trial so much. Yeah. Polly Frog says, what do you think the jury will decide? I also can't say anything with photos. Jack Pezblick's tweet, tweet out enhanced video. He never points the gun. $2 from Bango Skank says, I have zero faith in Richard's closing. Rhonda Ernst said, there's new, very clear video surface. Doesn't matter. Uh, John says, would the governor of Wisconsin calling a National Guard before meeting the jury be persuaded simply because threats of violence? I don't know what the motivations of the governor of Wisconsin are. Uh, Silverfish says, what do you think the over-under on call is winning? Um, I would say that uh, his odds are not in his favor at this point. Oh, thy Murr says, sure, sure, but what you see in Bang Binger, do you really think he can't fuck it up still? If his closing is as good as his opening, he should be fine. $5 from Beatrix Kiddo. Didn't Kyle yell, friendly, friendly, friendly? Also, did you see the video analysis? Uh, no, and I'm not going to. It doesn't matter, because it doesn't exist. Because it's not part of the record. 
420 atheism says this doesn't make any exist. Why wouldn't the judge allow mostly computer generated images as the basis? Because the defense sucks. Calco 123 Linus says, thanks for your expertise. Found you through Rikita Law. So frustrated over today's outcome. Any chance for mistrial with prejudice? Sure. It would be helpful if the defense renews it. Polly says, what about the new video? It doesn't exist. Polly Frog says, what if they bring it before the court? They can't. The evidence is closed. Chimp says, imagine a case in which enhanced image was the only evidence. Could anyone in good conscience testify to what it shows? Not really, but that's where we are. Chris says, this just shows zero search for justice by prosecution. Binger admitted it was political. Great work in the streams, by the way. You're welcome. John says, there's new breaking video. I don't care. Matt says, what does cost of liability look like? Really, really bad. With a conviction in place? Really super bad. Dwayne Olson says, because the burden of proof is only uh, preponderance of the evidence, and you know. Dwayne says, just join the dream. Does Kyle have an appeal for incompetence? Yes, but it's really hard. I wouldn't bet on it. Uh, Paul says, how is Groskowitz not being charged for anything? Because the prosecution doesn't want him to be. John says, who's pulling the strings on this behind the scenes? Barnes has mentioned it, him, in Nick or Viva. Call me crazy, but this really feels like it's being thrown. Barnes, I, I don't know. He had suggested it was the security guy that was hired to do security for Kyle, but I don't know anything at all about that. $20 from Mithrin Emmer says, of all days for defense not to show up, what the fuck were they thinking today? Great question. Jacob says, here's to a good weekend before closing arguments. $5 from Talex001. Even if Kyle pointed, would Rosabov have to retreat himself once Kyle started to run away? So even if true, he was clearly retreating. Uh, but he has to announce that he's retreating by the instructions, so no. Johnny Face says, thanks to you for the patience of answering questions. You're welcome. And $10 from Annoy1407. Civil Law, thanks for entertaining all the questions. Great job with the stream. Uh, Corey says, if the video everyone talking has been, been legitimate, can it be used after conviction to overturn and get a new trial? No, it can't be used after the trial because the appellate court can only base their decision on what's on the record. And the video is not on the record. It doesn't exist. So the appellate court cannot rely on it. Um... Excuse me. <laughs> Where was I on the bot before I answering some questions? I'm a little tired, but I'll answer a few more. How long have you been streaming? An hour 17? I think I got a little bit more life in me. If there's a case of mistrial because of the jury, can it, the judge ask with prejudice? Not because of the jury mistrial, no, but he could do, do it for other reasons. Is there any chance Chris, Chris C or what, whatever his name, I, I keep forgetting his name, but is there any chance the other defense lawyer will be closing? Yes, but I wouldn't bet on it because Richards is going to take, take it because of eco. Shall we not forget his first lawyer was Lynn Wood? I forgot all about that. Lynn Wood also sucks. Mooney Morgan says, off topic, but what's your opinion of Brittany hearing today? I, I think based on what, I'm not a huge, I haven't been following the case super closely, but based on what I have been following, it seems like the right decision. But uh, I don't have a, an incredibly strong opinion because I haven't been following it legally. Also because family law is the area of law that I least understand. So there's two reasons for me to be a little bit reluctant in my opinions, but based on what I have seen, it seems correct. Lewis Paralegal says, the officer states he didn't know how the video algorithm works. Therefore, we can't say it's not materially harder. So why the judge allow it? Because the defense sucks. Who gets the last bite in closing? The prosecution does. Watching Daily gives me a link to something, some kind of stats, and then it doesn't go anywhere. So, okay, thanks, I guess. Um, if Kyle's convicted, does that give Bicep Guy's $10 million case back into the city? No, Bicep Guy is screwed from his own testimony. Is carrying a, val uh, carrying a weapon a valid reason to believe it planned a homicide? In and of itself? 
Is, is carrying a weapon a valid... It depends what you mean a valid reason. Do you mean in and of itself? It's a valid reason. Sure. I mean, along with other reasons, yes. It, it could be understood to be preparation and planning. Carrying a weapon. Planning and preparation of a homicide. Sure. If you mean... Yeah. Self-defense with deadly force only applies to a person being directly threatened. No, it doesn't. Uh, watching you daily. Uh, Self-defense with deadly force only applies to the person being directly threatened. No, it, it doesn't. Um, there's defense of others. You can defend others. You don't have to be the person directly threatened. Mr. Patrick says, the defense is acting as if they think the hung jury is almost certain. Well, I wouldn't think about that. Pooley says, why do you think Richards is incompetent? No idea. Was Kyle saying new Rosenbaum was unarmed a huge coaching mistake? Yes. Yes, that was a massive mistake by Kyle. That was a massive mistake by Kyle in the stand, saying that he knew Rosenbaum was unarmed. That was a massive error. Massive error. Um, Otto says, would you suggest going to a mid-tier law school or a top-tier law school in terms of schnobbishness versus education? Well, if you can get into a top 14 law school, T14, and don't ask me why T14 as opposed to 15, I don't make up the rules, I just report them. So if you can get into a T14 law school, top 14, you should go to a top 14 law school. Otherwise, I don't think it matters that much. Jason says, if Rosenbaum lives, we have a responsibility for deaths. I don't know. <laughs> Taco Dolores says the courtroom seemed chaotic. People talking all over other. No one can finish their thoughts. Is that normal? For a hearing, it's pretty normal. It, it wasn't too bad for a hearing. It was, you know, it was fine. Uh, Bob says, wouldn't it be more strategic for the defense to allow blurry video footage in for the purpose of establishing reasonable doubt? I don't think so, because blurry video footage can mean what it wants to mean, and I don't think that helps. Brooklaw says, where's the secret got you evidence like in TV shows? Uh, Amy says, if you and Rakita and crew were counsel for Kyle in a new trial, which one of you would give opening and closing statements? I honestly don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of my any of my uh, brethren give an opening and closing statements, and they've never heard me give one either. So I'm not sure who would do the best job. Um, I don't know. I guess we'd have to like audition each other and see who who likes who. Uh, I don't need the glory. Uh, if Kyle is better off in someone's hands, that's fine by me. Which wouldn't be that hard. I mean, you know, since I have no criminal, ex well, that's not completely true. I have one case, I think, of criminal experience. Um, but, uh, you know, if if Nate or you know Emily wanted to do give an opening or closing, they probably would be better. But I've never heard them give opening or closing, so I can't really comment intelligently. Pirate fan says, "Can Kyle take a plea on some charges versus others?" This is assumes he's being offered a plea, which I don't think he is. He can plead guilty to some charges. Hello there says, "If Kyle's convicted, does this mean Grapus should go free since they're using shouldn't have been wearing a skirt argument?" Nope, Orange is not there, unfortunately. I love how everyone keeps mentioning this new evidence over at Jake Jack Pozabix's Twitter. I no, it, it no, it, it's not part of the record. No. Uh, Michelle says it seems like the judge is a lot of bark, but no bite. Why would the defense not object to lesser included? I honestly don't know. I don't know. The defense sucks is my answer to pretty much anything of why would the defense do X. So if you're if you're if your question is why would the defense do X, my answer is the defense sucks. Darth says you're saying the defense sucks. I am.
Uh, in the verse says, do you think Binger will use the full allowance? I'm not sure I could stand it. Uh, I wouldn't properly, properly if I were him. Uh, Dragon's Play says he has to announce he's retreating. Did I hear that right? The way it's the way it's written in the statute in Wisconsin says that you have to give adequate notice of withdrawal. You have to give adequate notice of withdrawal. So yes, that would be announcing. So yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, Johnny says uncivil law is a saint dealing with a repetitive newbism. As long as I have energy, as long as I have energy to spare, I will do my best to help give you all the information and all the legal analysis I can to the best of my legal knowledge and opinion. Uh, I, it, it, I enjoy doing this. It's a pleasure for me. I really hope this will become a full-time pro gig. Really, really do. I love this a lot more than my day job. There's so many stories I can't cover just because of time. I can't do everything I want to do. I just don't have the time. I don't have the time to make the studio stories. I don't have time to edit. I don't, ha I don't have time. Um, and so I would love for this to become pro so that I could, so that I could do more and do more time. And then, you know, with more people and more revenue, then I could, you know, hire professional editors so I could do even more stories and I could do them better and more produced and so forth and so on. So. I, I really hope this will become a uh, become a thing. So I, I I really do appreciate all the support. I really appreciate the 1147 of you who are currently watching. I'm happy to do this for as long as I have energy, and uh, it's awesome. Please remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And if you have subscribed already, check to make sure you're still still subscribed. You know, just just give it a double check. Are you sure you're subscribed? Are you sure? Uh, Beatrix Kiddo says, read the super chats in the order they come in. Then you wouldn't get everyone asking the same question. It's your fault. I am e reading the super chats in the order they come in. Beatrix, I am reading the super chats in the order it comes in. It's just that I'm so far behind because you guys are asking more questions faster than I can answer them. But I am reading them in order. Uh... E unum pluribus says, I hear you. Post is a pain in the arse. It sure is. Michelle says, can you explain why defense was arguing that Kyle was more dangerous? No. And my answer for everything, the defense is dumb. Kekatron says, at least in Wisconsin, there are a few more white poles along the population, at least near me. Yeah, you know, your 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 best hope probably is uh, is a is someone who is really hardcore on the free call camp and and hangs this jury man but you know it all depends on the deliberation it all depends on so much it depends on whether or not some of them get worn down so um you know anything is possible i'm not saying it can't be not guilty against the board i'm just saying you'd have to you'd have to forecast against it which is not to say it won't occur it could it was just 95 percent yesterday and now it's decidedly not Is there any problem generated by the prosecution entering new evidence halfway through the trial? Uh, in rebuttal? No. Jay is bored says, why didn't you answer my question? I don't know, Jay is bored. I don't know. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I skipped it. I'm doing the best I can. I'm sorry if I missed your question. I'm doing the best I can. E Unum Pluribus says, uh... When did the defense lose this one? Well, today for sure. Saul Brawley says it's frustrating that Richard seems to be weak link on defense. Agent 47 seems competent. Agent 47 is is good. Yeah. You're 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 naughty, Cinema Queen. I see what you're typing in chat. Uh watching Daily says the link was to the Wisconsin self-defense statute. Well, yeah, I I and yeah. Jacob says you've been awesome throughout the trial. Rip Drive says if it can be shown the state had access to a newly released video and didn't disclose it, that's a huge Brady problem. If they if they had it and they didn't disclose it, yeah. But this is a brand new video that just exists now, right? So, um, 
Daniel says, to what degree can the defense convey to the jury in closing the prosecution's being Melissa's filing the fifth? They have to be a little bit more careful about that. They can't disparage the the opposite side. They can't just openly say that they're they're misleading you and manipulating you. They have to be a little bit more subtle about it than that. Um, Drazenar says, give a shout out to the audience. For 1,200 people, we're behaving all very nicely. I'm very glad. The Jake Prosblick video appears to be a slow motion breakdown of the video I've seen, so maybe it's part of the record in some way. Maybe it is, in which case it's not new and we've already seen it. Philip Dwayne says, the interpolated images so should have been easy to block. The original images have 100% fidelity. Logically, the altered images represent a fiction loss of fidelity. Well, that might not itself be a problem as long as you had someone who could testify that they're true and accurate. And the guy who was on the stand had no clue about how it works. He's just like, I put it in the magic software and the magic software does what I tell it to do. And it's been peer reviewed, presumably by someone else who has even a less clue than I do. So it's not necessarily that it's been manipulated is enough or altered is enough if you can testify that they're true and accurate and you have some knowledge about how they work but they didn't so it should have been excluded for that reason tin weasel sends the new video is just a good way to show Kyle's not pointing his weapon can this be raised to neutralize provocation if it's already in the record if it's already in the record and the defense wants to basically if they're not using any new evidence so they're only using the evidence that's of record and they want to like basically carbon copy the, the, the Twitter video and just basically reenact it for the jury. I mean, they can do that just as long as they're not relying on new things. They can't bring his thing into it, but if they can recreate it, you know, themselves, then they can do that. But they can only rely on what's on the record. Pat Damon says, why didn't they go into Gage Gresswood's camera record during trial? But not the other man who was shot. Uh, I don't remember. While Goose says, I don't believe Kyle demanded to testify against his attorney's desires. I don't either, because his attorneys themselves said it was their advice. They said that during the trial, which is mind numbing. Corey says, "What? why is it a massive error? It's not too hard for a nutcase to beat someone to death with their bare hands. Oh, because it just takes away something from Kyle that they didn't have to take away. Right? It's not that he can't beat them to death with his bare hands, but how much better is it if he has a gun in his hands? Right? How much better is it if he has a gun than if he has his hands? It's not that you can't. It's just that a gun is more obvious. So it's a massive error to concede that ground. Bill Thomas says, what happens to any unspent money raised for defense? It would go back to Kyle, if there's anything left over. Sarah B says, are you into gaming? Yeah. Uh, Santiago says, hi there from Argentina. Really glad that you had such incredible growth. Seems all the hard work has paid off. Cheers. Thank you. Corey H says, I love the combined streams you've been doing, Rikita, but I tried watching all the individual streams. Yours is only one of two I like without the group. Thank you. That's extremely kind, Corey. I really, really appreciate that you find my stuff that valuable. That's really, really nice. In your opinion, is it likely defense can redeem their case in closing? They can try, but I think the odds favor the prosecution. Uh, N. Lindgrill says, did you notice Big Boy kept saying Kyle gently put it down with 50%, but started saying drop with real time? I did not notice that. And if that's true, that's pretty interesting. Donal says, not really related, but I slightly to point you didn't explain how GPS works on Mercata stream. <laughs> uh, so I have to explain how GPS works now? Okay. Okay. All right, I'll explain how GPS works. <laughs> I'll do the super chat and then I'll explain how GPS works. All right. Eagles Paws Gaming says for $5, wasn't there a state of emergency declared 
for temporal charge is the legal structure of given jurisdictions the terms outlined by the states and statutes yeah all right so here's here's how gps works okay so okay so all the gps satellites all the gps satellites have an atomic clock built in them right so these are the most these are the most accurate clocks that you can have right? atomic clocks they keep the most accurate time all right and so each of the each of the gps satellites is on a is on a known orbit right so if it's satellite number 12 if it's satellite number 12 then you know what its orbit is around the earth right you know you know the altitude it's at and you know the path that it takes right so this can be programmed into the gps so you program into the gps okay satellite 12 satellite 12 is at this high this is at this altitude and it's on this path so it's on this circle around the earth right you plug that into the gps device okay so what the gps receiver does so what the gps what the gps satellites are doing constantly is broadcasting the time all right they broadcast the time and what the gps receiver does is it receives all the time so the gps receiver is basically asking all the time is asking constantly what time is it what time is it what time is it all right now because the speed of light is not instantaneous right the speed of light takes time because the speed of light is, in, is not instantaneous the answers that it gets from the gps even for the own for even for even for the same satellite won't be the same because the satellite has moved right so if the satellite is directly above you right and the beam is coming directly down that takes so long but if the satellite is on the horizon and coming across this way it's further away right so so the so the time gets dis, the the answer to the time basically comes distorted by the amount of time it takes to travel so let's say the gps says it's exactly 12 o'clock all right so if the GPS says it's exactly 12 o'clock and you know it's exactly above you at exactly so much height, then you say, okay, given the speed of light, given the speed of light, it says it's exactly 12 o'clock, but that's not correct because I know how far above it is of me and I know how long that takes. So I can add the amount of time that I know it takes because the, the position of the GPS is predictable. So it's not actually 12 o'clock, it's actually, 12 oh, 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 point blah 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 whatever right okay so it can so it can do that and it can do that for all the satellites and it can do that because the satellites are on a predictable path okay great so then for each satellite you're asking what time it is and each satellite is telling you the time so you know you know it has to be somewhere above you in within the horizon right so it can only be part of the circle so it can't be everywhere in the circle it can only be part of the circle that's within your within your horizon because it's below the horizon you can't hear the time anymore because it's below the horizon all right so now what you do is you get you get a number from this from this this gps it says okay you say all right it's it's 12 o'clock it's on a predictable path so i know where this satellite is I know where the satellite is, so it's not really 12 o'clock, it's really this time, because I know where the GPS is. So I know that, that the GPS satellite is this distance away from me, but I don't know where it is away from this distance from me, right? If it's directly above me, it can only be directly above me, because there's only one way, that's only one time, right? But if it's any other time, it's somewhere on a circle, right? Somewhere on a circle, because if it's off by you know 15 seconds which is ridiculous but if it's off by 15 seconds then it could be anywhere on a circle above you the distance to which is 15 seconds of deviation so you know you're somewhere within that circle you're somewhere within that circle and because the circle actually is a sphere right because you're anywhere on the surface of the sphere right so you know that you're on the surface of a sphere that's so far away from the GPS satellite that's telling you what time it is. Okay, so now you know what sphere, now you know you're somewhere on the surface of the sphere. Great. So now what you do is you ask the other GPS satellites, what time is it? 
And now satellite number 15 comes along and says, oh, here's what time it is. I think it's 11.59, blah, blah, blah. And then satellite number 27 comes along and says, oh, I think it's 12.01 point blah, blah, blah. Or the satellite number one says, oh, I think it's, I think it's, you know, blah, 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 whatever, right? So, so each of the satellites is telling you what time it is and each of them are different and each of them are wrong. They're all wrong because they all take time to get you, but they're all predictable. So now in the GPS receiver, you say, okay, I must be on the surface of a sphere that has this radius. So I know I'm somewhere on the sphere that has this radius. And I know I'm somewhere on the sphere that has of this thing that has this radius. So now you have intersecting, intersecting spheres, right? So GPS satellite G number one and GPS satellite number two are both telling you the time. You both know you're on the surface of the sphere. So you must be on a place where the two spheres intersect. Right, that's the only place you could be. You're all both on, you have to be on the surface of both spheres at the same time. So you're on a place where the spheres intersect. Okay, great. So then you ask a third satellite what time it is. And now you're up to two dimensions. So with three satellites, you can tell two dimensions. So you need a minimum of four satellites to tell you three dimensions. So with, th with four satellites, telling you four circle, four spheres, you can say, I'm on the surface of all these spheres and there's one intersection point and I must be exactly there. And that's how you know where you are. And then you use other GPS, other GPS devices to further get even more accuracy. Because again, you're dealing with, you're dealing with the time being slightly off and the time can deviate slightly from atmospheric conditions and other factors, right? So you can't even be sure the GPS is exactly telling you the correct time for sure because it could have changed somewhere along the way because of the atmosphere or something else, right? It could be reflected or whatever else. So you, now you ask a fifth satellite and you ask a sixth satellite and you ask a seventh satellite, as many satellites as you can get. You ask, what time is it? And all, sat all seven satellites tell you what time it is. And then from all those times, you can generate the spheres of every satellite and you know you're on the intersection point of all those satellites and bingo bango you have gps now what's even real now what's even worse now what's even more fun for the gps is you have to deal with relativity which is even more fun right so you know or you should know the closer to the speed of light you go the more time itself slows down right that's relativity time is not a constant the faster you go time itself slows Time itself slows to the point where if you could go the speed of light, the time would stop. Relative to you, it would stop if you could go the speed of light, which of course you can. But these satellites are in orbit, right? And the orbits are really, really fast. They're moving at like, I don't even know, 20,000 miles an hour. Which means that even though these GPS devices use the most accurate clocks known to man, you have to account for relativity because the clocks themselves are not ticking at consistent rates because the, the GPS receivers are at different altitudes and they're moving at different speeds, which means that each clock is moving at a different rate of time. The time is not even consistent from satellite to satellite. And when you're talking about GPS and trying to get down to, the, the when you're trying to get down to smaller and smaller granules of, of location, you have to have more and more precise time. Right, because if you're just like, what are your margins of error? So if you're to the nearest minute, and this is not even gonna be close to accurate, but it illustrates the point. If you're to the nearest minute, maybe you can say you're you're within 10 degrees of latitude. If you're in the nearest second, you're within so many degrees of latitude. So the more precise you want the GPS to be, the more precise you need the time to be. Which means that now you start have to account for relativity because the clocks themselves, while they're not exactly wrong, but they're all ticking independently because you have to now account for relativity on top of all of that. So that's how GPS works. GPS works by a very complicated method of asking what time it is and getting the answer. I hope this helped. And I have 900 people left. I have 900 people left. People were not, their people were interested in the law discussion. They were not interested in the GPS discussion. I'm not, I'm not angry, I'm excited. I'm not angry, I'm excited. That's my excited voice. That's my excited voice. Ooh, I get to tell you a thing. I'm excited. Let me tell you the thing. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, man. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How can GPS work if the Earth's flat though? Well, if the Earth is flat though, then you only need three satellites because you only need two dimensions worth of accuracy. So you got that going for you if the Earth is flat. Um, 
<laughs> uh eagle eagle paul gaming says wasn't there a state emergency we discussed that how's the computer fraud and abuse act work in space well if it's a u.s asset the same way it does on does on earth uh ryan english says fbi raided project vertos and s sends privileged communications to new york time have i heard about it i have and that is really disturbing and i want to be able to cover it yeah the GPS doesn't ask what time it is. The satellites just call it what time it is. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. They're not literally asking the satellite to tell them what time it is because the, the receiver doesn't have the ability to communicate to the satellite. So, yes, they're not literally making a call to say what time it is. I was using it more as a metaphorical of what time it is. Let me look at my watch. Right. So I was using it. It's like, I want to know what time it is. Let me go look at my watch. Oh, the satellite says it's this time. I was I was implying I was implying consciousness to the GPS receiver I guess five five pounds from Sakota Sakota what's the likelihood G, the judge thinks that case is bunk and expects hopes the jury will quit in political circumstances yeah a couple of things we don't know correct local time at the start so no longer predictable so we have to solve simultaneous their time dimension too. Well, we do we do have the ability to know for uh, local time at the start. We do have the ability to know local time for the start, but of course you have to adjust it going the other way because we do have the known time on Earth. And uh, for the military, that is the National Observatory in Washington, D.C. For the civilians, it's the... I used to know this so well. It's a radio tower. It's NIST. National Institute of Standards and Technology. So, yeah, for civilian applications, the the time, the, the the for civilian applications, the legally correct time is kept by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They have a radio station in Colorado. It's called WWVA, and it broadcasts the time. And your watch or clock, if it's a radio-controlled clock, you ever see those clocks that say they're radio-controlled? Radio-controlled clock to know the time? Yeah, it's because the radio's in Colorado. It's called WWVA. It's controlled by National Institute of Standards and Technology. You're welcome. For the military, it's controlled by the United States Naval Observatory, which is the home of the, of the vice president and is Washington, D.C. So we do have a known local time because we have the NIST and USNO master clocks. So they can also correct, they can also correct the GPS's clocks. Right, so if you want to correct the GPS's clocks, you can do that because you just you feed them the time from the from the USNO master clock, and of course you have to account for all the things I mentioned before. But you do know the local time because USNO master clock. The atomic clock tower is in Cheyenne. I'm not sure if it's actually in Cheyenne. I know it's in Colorado, but I'm not sure if it's actually in Cheyenne. It might be in Cheyenne. I don't think it's in Cheyenne. It's close to there, though. Um, was the FBI video admitted in trial because that's where the new footage came from? Not this video that we're arguing about. This is some drone footage that came from nowhere. And then, of course, if you want the master clock uh, for the uh, arguably the world, then you're looking at uh, the clock in the UK, which is in Greenwich. Uh, because that's where you get Greenwich Mean Time from, and uh, I still have a bit of a. Uh, I this is a this is a interesting story or not, but I'll tell you anyway, because um, I'm so geeky. This will this will this will help with my geek cred, I think. Um, I went to England as a college freshman with my then girlfriend's high school senior French class. Yeah, they were going to France, and on the way, we stopped to London. That's right. That's right. So I was a college freshman. She was a high school so a senior. Um, and we, we, we were in London for a couple days on our way to France. And they had a rule that, you know, you couldn't go anywhere by yourself because, you know, body system and all the rest of it. And uh, I wanted to go to Greenwich to see the clock. I could not get anyone else interested in taking the train to Greenwich to see the clock. I want to go see a show. I want to go see a play. And I'm like, I want to go see the damn clock. I could not get anyone to go with me to see the damn clock. I'm still a little bit mad about it.
Oh, Lord. <laughs> and what you said about me being angry. My father, my father he does that to me all the time. He hates it. My father always tells me to quiet down because when I get really excited about something, I just keep raising my voice and raising my voice and raising my voice because I'm so excited. And as you just heard just now, I can project when I get excited. And so like when my dad asks me, and it's, it, it's really counter, and it, my dad loves me, but it's very counterproductive because then I just don't talk to my dad about anything that ever excites me. Because when I get really, really excited, I just talk louder and louder and louder and louder. And my dad just keeps saying, shh, shh. And I'm like, okay, I won't talk anymore. So, you know, you just, you just, you just heard what my father has to put up with, but unlike you, you're not in the room and you can't shush me. So, you know, fun. Yeah, it, it probably is a good thing. It probably is a good thing. I've been in, and I've been in, I've been in rooms like at, at, at group dinners and stuff, and suddenly my voice is like projecting through half the room. Very good when you're a public speaker. Very good when you're a public speaker and you're trying to talk to a large audience without a microphone. Not so good when they're trying to have a quiet dinner and suddenly your voice is projecting through half the room. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can uh, be very loud when I'm sufficiently motivated. Um, let's see, where was I in the chat? I completely lost it. He's getting five-year max. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. Was the Rittenhouse trial the best thing to happen to YouTube law since sliced bread? Well, it's at least the best thing to happen to YouTube law since uh, the uh, women's soccer cases. I've never gone to see the clock. I've never gone to see the clock. It, it, it remains a, a bucket life goal. Why do you think the case is over for, for defense? I kind of picked that. Who picked the jurors? They both did. Does provocation instruction mean the jury is required to consider the first bad actor? No, it doesn't require it. It doesn't require them to consider him the first bad actor. Bad actor. It just gives them all the excuse they need to. Electromagnetic waves only propagate the speed of light while in a vacuum. Makes calculations GPS way more fun. This is correct. This is correct. I failed to account for that in my explanation. You're absolutely correct. Vanectius, the speed of light itself is not constant because the speed of light changes as it passes through mediums. And depending on the medium, you can actually get to move pretty slowly. Um, so yeah, uh, you also have to account for the fact the speed of light changes as it moves through the atmosphere. So there's also that, that's true. If a retrial occurs, can testimony from the first trial be used? Under limited circumstances, yes. Uh, it depends why there's a new trial. If it's for ineffective assistance of counsel, then no. If it's for just about any other reason, then yes. What's my opinion on the James Boyle book on the public domain? I have no opinion of that. For the uncivil law, visit the clock fund. That's very, very funny. Does the Second Amendment prevent government from keeping phones from having guns? Um, Scalia seemed to imply as much. If the felon were insane persons that deadly, why not the death penalty? Because that is a much harsher sanction. Neil deGrasse Tyson achievement unlocked. Thank you. Uh, can I explain gloss nest next? No, I don't know how gloss next works. I assume it works through a similar principle, but I don't know. Clock or bust? Thank you very much. What about space law? What about space law? Always has been. If we do have a radio clock signal, that's also wrong as it takes time to reach us. Yes, but for the clocks that for the clocks that are being adjusted by the radio signal, uh, none of them are precise enough for that distance to matter. But yes, it, it, it is it is true. Yeah, if you're if you're setting your watch or your wall clock from the radio signal, the time delay in the radio signal propagating is not enough to worry about. We're not talking about that level of accuracy. We are talking about that level of accuracy with GPS because we need more accuracy for more precise uh, location calculations with lower margins of error. 
which is very important, for example, if you want to use GPS to, for example, autopilot a car. Probably very helpful to know exactly where it is, just as a suggestion. The Earth is flat from the perspective of a four-dimensional being. Well, I don't know whether or not it would be flat or not, because then you'd ask, what is the perspective of a two-dimension to a four-dimensional being? And I don't know the answer to that question. Are we going to get into higher dimensionality and how many dimensions there are? And whether or not we can do folds of lines? So we can imagine a line, and then we can imagine a fold in the line, and we can do, like, create ten, create ten dimensions through various things. Um... Uh, Someone asked me if I've ever tried shaving my head. I have not. They asked me that in DM for some reason. Uh, no. The Earth is not flat airline pilot. You don't have to convince me. You don't have to convince me, my friend. Uh, unless, unless, uh, you can give a lecture about computer encryption. Oh, public key encryption. Oh, that's that's pretty fun because usually I go with the paint colors um, to explain how public key encryption works. Um, it's I think it's a pretty classic to explain public key encryption. So yeah, well you have two different kinds: asymmetric and symmetric uh, encryption. So you have one you have one key or you have two keys. And public key encryption, which is the internet, uses two keys. So we could talk about one key encryption. The most famous of which is probably, um, what's it called? Um, uh, when you have a pad, when you have a completely random pad that's at least the same length as the message and it's completely random and it's called... Uh, I should know this one. Help me out. Yeah, it's a single key encryption. A single key encryption, it's just called a one-time pad? Oh, yeah, it's just called a one-time pad. Okay, yeah, so it's, I thought it was a more complicated name than that, but you're right, it's just called a one-time pad. For some reason, I got confused and thought it was a more complicated than that. Okay, so there's two different kinds, where you have one key and you have two keys. So if you have one key, you need some, mes you seem, you need some method to get the key from the person who's encrypting the message to the person who decrypts the message, which means you need a secure channel. And if you already have a secure channel, then why are you bothering with the encryption in the first place, right? Uh, so for most, for most, so one one key encryption, but it does have some advantages. The most obvious of which is for one time pad. So in one time pad, you literally use one pad one time. You have to have a pad that's at least as long as the message. So you can't repeat the message. The pad, the pad has to be random, and you have to have a different pad for every message. So if you use a one-time pad, then it's unbreakable. It's unbreakable. And you can prove that mathematically. Because if, you, if it's truly random, if it's truly random, then you can decrypt the message into any message of the same length. Because, any, any, because there's nothing to extract the pattern from. So if you, if you, have, a, if you have a known answer, and it's known with a one-time pad, it's unbreakable because the answer could literally be anything that would, would be that length. You have no way to determine the what the what the correct message is is from an incorrect message. There's no way to determine that. So it's mathematically perfect. Now, th this is less a problem now, but in the early days of encryption, it was definitely a problem where there were people selling software that they said used a one-time pad, which doesn't even make sense. It's like, how's that even possible? It's not, by the way. But you did have some snake oil people in the early earlier days of encryption saying, well, we're doing like software with one-time pads. N no, you're not. But you know, one-time pads are the most secure. So it's been suggested that they're used for like, you know, really secure nuclear missile encryption or something. Um, I don't know about the, the degree to which that's true. Um, all I can say about you know the nuclear message encryption is uh, Skyboard, 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 uh, do not reply. 
Skybird, Skybird, do not reply, is all I can say about the nuclear message encryption. Great. Now, um, or I think it's do not answer, actually, instead of do not reply, but I was close. Anyways, um, where was I? Oh, yes. So then, so then two key encryption, PGP being perhaps the most famous, or RSA, or any of those other things. Um, is randomness even possible? Sure. It's just, yeah, there's, 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 there's really good ways to generate randomness. Um, the, perhaps the most secure way to ge generate randomness is through using a nuclear decay. Um, because whether or not the, the decay will spin off, will spin to the left or spin to the right is truly random. And we have no way to predict it given current theory. So yeah, if you want truly random numbers, the best way to do it is by looking at the spin of a, de of a decaying nuclear atom which given all knowledge we have is random and there's no way to predict it. So yeah, you can generate true randomness, that'd be great. If you want something a little less secure, then uh, random radio noise is fine. So just turn just turn to uh, a radio station, just turn your radio to a station where, or turn your radio to a frequency where there's no broadcast and you'll get what you call white noise. What you're really getting is atmospheric static, incidentally, and that's random too. So you can use atmospheric static, that's also really good. Um, of course, you can use it during any. Phys you can use it in, uh, with any physical number of physical methodologies to generate true randomness. With a computer, um, not so much. Your best bet is for pseudo randomness. But if you use like the exact time um, as your key, then you can get pretty close to something approaching true randomness. Although, if you knew the exact time, you can regenerate the pattern. So pseudo randomness is pretty good, but it's not a. It's not th not a thing. But so, anyways, for public key encryption. So public key encryption, you have a public key and a private key. And the easiest way to, and, and so when you combine the public key and private key, you get a message that can only be uh, decrypted with both of them, right? So uh, you can use, you can use the, so you publish the public key, that's the whole point. You publish your public key and you hold it private, your private key. So anyone can encrypt a message to you with your private key and their private key, or your public key and their private key. You can use their private key to authenticate they sent it, and then you can use your public key or your private key to un unencrypt your public key. And the easiest way I have to analogize uh, how hard it is to do this is by saying, is by looking at color, because uh, color is a pretty good example. So if you, a public key and a private key are kind of like two colors. And you can determine what the combination of those colors is very easily. But it's very hard to determine what the constituent colors are, right? So if I give you any two colors, if I give you any two colors, and I say, what is the combination of these colors? It's really easy. You just mix the colors, and you're like, that's the answer, right? Very easy. If I give you the mixed color, and I ask you, what are the constituent colors that formed it? Extremely hard extremely hard, particularly if I need to know very precisely, very precisely what the constituent colors are, which is basically what you have in public key cryptography, right? So it's not just red plus blue equals purple and trying to figure out what constituent colors made up purple. It's like what constituent colors made up this exact shade of purple? And by exact, we mean pretty exact. And trying to figure out what colors those are, it's basically impossible to backwards engineer, right? You can't figure it out mathematically. So it's very easy to figure out one way and basically impossible to figure out the other way. But if I have my private key, right? So if I have half the color, so if I have the half the color, which is my private key and you encrypted it with my, with using my public key, right? I have the other half of the color. So now I get this, I get this bizarro color, right? And I know what one of the colors is because I have the private key. So because I know what one of the colors is, I can extract out my color from the combined color, and now I have the color that you had, right? Which is a way to authenticate it. And that's how you get the message. Does any of that make any sense? This, and then we could talk about Alice and Bob, but we don't need to talk about Alice and Bob. So all that good stuff. The mixing paints is different. It's key. It's a Diffie Hellman key exchange. That too. That too. Yes, that is an example. That's an example of a public key encryption. So that's an example of a Diffie Hellman key exchange. Exactly correct. You're correct, sir. Very good. 
I, I have a PGP key sitting out there. I don't remember my decryption pack or password. I do have the revoke key. I never bothered to revoke it, but I did have PGP back in the day just because I'm that geeky. Um, where was I in terms of answering questions from the chat? What other, what other uh, questions can I answer from technical perspectives? Yeah, yeah co colors are pretty good. Can we take the edit bulb? What's an edit bub? Can we take edit? I don't know what that means. PGP is bay. PGP is pretty bay. Phil Phil Zimmerman is pretty bay. And uh, I was I was with PGP and stuff like that. And yeah, I prefer locks on box for pay, pay, public private. Yeah, that that works too. TrueCrypt. TrueCrypt got decertified for some reason. Or it got, uh, yeah, it got, TrueCrypt was good, but it got uh, deprecated by its authors for some reason. I now only have 682 people watching. A lot of people are not interested in the, a lot of people are not in the, into the encryption and time aspects of, of let me talk to you about geek shit. And then we could talk about my day job, which is databases and search engines. And, and computer databases and search engines, we can start talking about particular methodologies of doing database searches and for particular applications, which is mind, which is mind numbingly geeky on levels I don't think even you guys are prepared to understand. Because it's, it's it <laughs> you know what makes it really bad? What makes it really bad is, <laughs> what makes it really bad is you have to take um, an engineer Right, you have to take an engineer who came up with this engineering thing, and you have to explain it, which is already insufferable enough. But then you come to me, and then I have to take it and I have to explain it in legal language. That's my job. That's my job. That's how geeky a shit I am. I am Lord King Geek over here because that's parent law. Yeah, I have to take your geek shit idea from the engineer who is explaining this technically and wants to bore everybody to death. And then I have to take the technical explanation and then I have to take it and I have to convert it into legal language. Yeah, that's what I do for a job. That's what I do for a job. But I also have an interest. I also have an interest, as you guys know, in other fields of law. And I also have an interest in trial advocacy. Because as you guys saw me do just earlier this stream when people were still paying attention, as you guys saw me do, it's like, I know how to do this. I know how to write this. It's like, I know how to do it, Binger. Here's how to do it. Here's how you do it. Now you're going to do it off the top of my head. Easy. So I have an interest in a lot of things. So I'm a well-rounded guy. I went to Clemson University for my undergrad, uh, so that's uh, that's what I did. Oh, we want to talk about sharding to Biden sharding. That's funny. That's funny. Talk about database sharding to Biden sharding. Cute. I get that joke. Ha ha ha. Spread spectrum communication system is. Oh, and then of course, uh, what's her name? I can never remember. Uh, what's her name? The person who invented Wi-Fi, the woman who's uh, the actress. Is it Heidi something? I wish I could remember her name. Um, well, she didn't, she didn't literally invent Wi-Fi, but she invented the underlying technology. Uh, Hedy Lamar. I know it's close. I really should remember her name. Yeah, Hedy Lamar, actress, and uh, 1940s actress, bombshell. She was a very beautiful woman, actress, and she invented Wi-Fi. Yeah. She invent technically what she invented was ha ha a spectrum hopping. But uh, 
Yeah, that that's a thing that happened in the 1940s. Was it frequency? Whatever. Yeah, it, it was one of them. There's only 150 likes. I probably lost some likes along the way. I probably lost some likes. How many likes do I have now? 702? I have 702. That's not so bad. She invented torpedo guides. So she was a smart cookie. I think she invented Bluetooth. Yeah. Did you guys know that Bluetooth is named after a uh, a Viking? And uh, the symbol for Bluetooth is his name. Like, literally. It's the symbol for his name. And apparently he was famous. Uh, or his claim to fame in history was for being a good communicator. Did you know that about Bluetooth? It's a guy. Harold, Harold Bluetooth. Norwegian King? I thought he was a Viking, but close enough. Close enough. Yeah, he united the tribes, yeah. And Michael Burke said he was impressed. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my, Mikkel says, you've been baited into satellite talk. Don't let random chat with random questions put you from talk a lot, which you do really well. I like to think I do a couple things really well because I have a, I have a technical background and I do technical shit all day long. So I, 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 I'm a gun enthusiast. I like guns, so I can talk about them fairly competently. I can talk about technology and some technologies fairly competently, especially databases, search engines. I can talk about competently. I can talk about trial advocacy pretty competently. I have many fields of competence. I'm an all-around wonderful guy. Who are my typical customers? Google and people who want to be Google uh, is the way I always put it. Um, Google and people who want to be Google. Well, more so, but most of the time I'm dealing with very, very, sp I have actually had Google, by the way, um, on occasion. But um, most of the time it's very, very specialized stuff. Uh, most of the time it's very specialized stuff to so so solve a very specialized problem. So you would never know it exists. You know, you would never know. It's just a big black box to the consumer. But it's trying to solve a very particular problem. Which is fine. You know, the patent law does that too. I could have been an expert witness in Rittenhouse. I know. Yeah. So ja someone said that the Jack video on Twitter is on the record. So if it's on the record, then great. Then they can use it in closing. Then fine. Do I see any similarities in McMichael self-defense and the Rittenhouse self-defense? I guess there's some similarities. Yeah, yeah. Mega, mega, mega mom bass says, what was crazy is the federal government was trying to take away the funding for, for, for WWV. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when they were trying to take away funding for WWV. I was really pissed because WWV is relatively cheap. I think it's like $30 million, which for the government is nothing. Actually, it isn't the Greenwich one. Have I been lied to about the clocks? That's sad. Greenwich used to be, but it's not anymore now? Oh no, what's the official clock now? They changed it from the Greenwich Observatory? What bullshit is this? I missed that memo. Was it a Brexit thing? Uh, what are the odds if he beats us the feds will retry? I think zero. I don't see any federal cause of action. What would I like for Christmas? Love. Uh, Twenty-five dollars from Wolfgang Deo. Marbury versus Masson. Was it a wrong decision? Is it two prods? If there are problems with it, can't be resolved. I think I've done something on Marbury versus Masson before. Um, you could. I, I'll have to check. I think I've done one before. Um, but um, yeah, Marbury versus Masson. I do not believe was uh, incorrectly decided. Marbury versus Madison is the uh is the og case that says the federal courts and the supreme court have the ability to review of uh, review uh, decisions and implicitly strike them down as unconstitutional um i don't believe it was wrongly decided because the way i read article 3 that's just what article 3 says right it says that they it says the courts have the power to hear any case in law or equity 
That's what Article 3 says. It says those federal courts have the power to hear any case under federal law that's in law or equity. And the, the Constitution itself is a law. The Constitution itself says so. It's fact, it says it's the supreme law, right? The Constitution is the supreme law. So if the supreme, so if Article 3 of the Constitution says the federal courts have the power to decide any case in law and equity, and the Constitution is a law, in fact, it's the first law, the supreme law, then doesn't that necessarily imply that any inferior law that conflicts it with it would have to be illegal because it's the supreme law? So how does, how does judicial review not flow from the text of Article 3? It, it seems to flow from the text of Article 3 to me. So that's what I think. Tim says they love me. Thank you, Tim. That's very nice. How about relationship advice? I am not good at relationship advice. I'm not great at relationship advice. I can't even really help myself in that domain that much sometimes. Do you think quantum computers can break RSA currently exist? No. No, the RSA, the quantum computers so far are no better because the, the, they have to... They have to, I mean, quantum computers kind of exist, but not really, because they have to correct for themselves so much that you're basically just back, left back to conventional computing. So you're not there yet. Internet used both. Public keys are used to encrypt symmetric keys. Okay. Do Binger's tactics violate the prime directive? No? Tech is fun. It is fun. We don't mind geek shit, but you got to pepper in some random funny shit to throw us off here and there. What type of law do you practice? Patent law. We discussed it. Weren't you a patent examiner as a day job? Yes. Anyone ever watched the lockpicking lawyer? Yes. Veracrypt is, the, Veracrypt is the true spiritual successor? Can you explain how Ziggy from Quantum Leap works? Not really. What's my favorite trivia fact about patent law? Well, we lost a lot of the patents in a great fire, which is annoying, including uh, including the patent for the fire uh, fire extinguisher, the patent for the fire uh, fire uh, hydrant. Yeah, the fire hydrant. We lost the patent for the fire hydrant in a fire. What's the relevance of this testimony, the one I'm giving? It's relevant because it's fun. Is it possible to test the jury's ability to see to find what happened in the blurry video? No, that's what we're asking them for. I don't do Bitcoin, no. I keep all my finances in uh, just broad-based mutual funds, which is more than re enough return for my taste. What are the odds of acquittal? Less than 50%. All right. Possible for defense or gents provocation during closing? Sure. All right. I believe I have. Uh, I believe I have answered all your questions in the last two hours, eighteen minutes, including some questions that were off field, but we geeked out pretty hard. We've already done the start. We've already, uh, someone asked me about my thoughts on service like U.S. Law Shield. I haven't done enough independent research to have an independent opinion, so I have no uh, opinion on that thing. Um, you know. Um, but yeah, we've done the st we've done the Star Trek review. That was fun. We could do Star Wars reviews, but you know, I think I think I think uh, New Hope is better than uh, the Emperor Strikes the Empire Strikes Back, which is a bit of a controversial opinion. I think most people rate Empire stronger, but I think New Hope is a little stronger. That's my most controversial opinion when it comes to Star Wars. The prequels suck ass. Uh, the Ewoks suck ass. That's yeah. That's that's basically what I gotta say about that. Um. Yeah, D and D. I'd love to play some D and D. Some stuff. You don't believe the drone video is real? I don't think I said that. I didn't believe the drone video is real. I don't, I never said anything of the kind that I didn't think the drone video was real. Did I say the drone video wasn't real? When did I say that?
Four, five, six are great. One, two, three are bad. Seven, eight, and nine are dumpster fire. Three's okay. I loved Alex Jones's explanation of the Star Wars prequels. I loved Alex Jones's explanation of the Star Wars prequels. If you've never seen it, if you've never seen it, it's worth your time. It's worth your time. You should Google Alex Jones Star Wars prequels, and there's a great video of him explaining the plot of the Star Wars prequels. And when Alex Jones explains it, it makes sense. It makes sense, and it sounds like a great movie. It sounds like a great movie. Should we find it together? Should we find it together and we can watch together Alex Jones explain the Star Wars prequels? Yes, we should. Yes, we should do that because it's my channel and I can do whatever the hell I want. All right, let's do this thing. This is fun. Hold on. And it, it's, it is funny. What makes it really, really great is that Alex Jones is such a conspiracy theorist, and he's able to spot the plot because basically the, the prequels are a conspiracy. So like, like the worst trait of Alex Jones where he thinks everything is conspiracy, the movies are basically a conspiracy, and he sucks it out. It's like, oh, yeah, that's what the movies were about the whole time. It's really, really sharp. Hold on. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is this is good shit. Hold on. All right, let's do this thing. Hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. No, that's not what I wanted. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Oz shows himself. You know him. You love him. You tolerate him. All right, let's do this thing. Let me just briefly explain Revenge of the Sith. Um plot line because at the time we wrote articles I can't hear anything is it, is it monotone about it because no hold on why can't I hear anything you're on the wrong mic no the mic have, the mic has got Going for his heads on mine. Shouldn't. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, it does. All right. So that won't happen anymore. Sorry about that. Yeah, so that won't happen anymore. So I changed that feature so it won't do that. Now I just have to understand why it's not playing for me. All right, so let's 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 see if this works now. Hold on. Why are you not doing what I want you to do? Let me just briefly explain Revenge of the Sith um, plot line. Because at the time, we wrote articles about it because the media said, we don't understand this. What th This makes no sense. The most popular of the three prequels. It made total sense. Emperor Palpatine was a little-known senator from Naboo, small planet, 
he finances terrorists to attack the planet. And then he plays victim and says says that the pacifist republic isn't doing enough to help him with the terrorist invasion, the Trade Federation invasion, uh, who even speak in Chinese accents. It's all geopolitical. And so, uh, yeah, little aliens with Chinese accents. Uh, he then goes and complains and catapults himself in the crisis into the role of chancellor. Because, you know, he was the victim, but now he, he demanded something be done. He'd been a pacifist previously. Now he's chancellor. Episode two, launches terror attacks uh, all over the galaxy with groups he's secretly financing through his backers in the Trade Federation. He turns around double crosses in the end. Uh, Lord Vader killed Viceroy Gunray and everyone else in the... So basically, in the end, they knock out all of the people that backed them, which always happens. Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, Maoist China, learn from history. Then in episode, so he uses that to build up the power of the empire in episode two. And now he's got this big imperial army, but it's not imperial yet. But it's, it's the stormtroopers, the outfits, the weapon systems to counter this outside threat run by Count Dooku, the, the Osama bin Laden guy that actually works for him, and they meet in secret. Now, in episode three, he launches an attack on the imperial capital himself. He launches an attack on New York. And then he gets captured, and, and then he sets up Count Dooku to get killed, and then he seduces to the dark side Anakin Skywalker to make him Darth Vader. And in the end, he then sets up, after he has the police state in place, he sets up the Jedi and says they're terrorists and has the anti-terror forces go in and wipe them out. And then he says he's launching a global... Uh, intergalactic war uh, to bring peace. Now, the media could could not understand, wait, and they actually wrote articles, Emperor Palpatine's attacking himself, it makes no sense. Adults cannot understand children-level ideas, okay? Child-level ideas, child-level. How can you not understand it? How can you not understand it indeed, my friends? How can you not understand it indeed? When when Alex Jones, see Alex Jones, he understands the conspiracies. He sees them everywhere. So he understands the plot of Star Wars 1, 2, and 3, and suddenly it's like, oh, that was what it was about. Oh, yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah, it's like it's, when, he, when, he's described, when he describes it, when he describes it, I'm like, geez, I wish I had seen that movie. That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Wish I had seen that movie. Oh, uh, good times. Good times. Yeah. Uh, good times. I'm not, not the hugest fan of <laughs> Alex Jones by any stretch, but uh, that was definitely one where he had it on. And uh, it's like, yeah, and I love, I also love his point, which is right on the money. It's like, you know, how, uh, how, you know, Palpatine stabs everyone in the back and that's what all of them do. You know, the Nazis, the, 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 the communists, everyone, they always stab everyone else in the back, you know, when they take power. So it's like, yeah, it's great. Uh, it's when I had to read Ayn Rand. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to sign off now that I have. Uh, slashed. Uh, now that I have blackpilled everybody, <laughs> now that I blackpilled everyone and attained, or, attained anyone, everyone with an explanation of how GPS works, uh, an explanation how uh, encryption works, how how single pad encryption works, how um, how Diffie Diffie Hellman key exchange works in public key encryption, uh, explain and explained the true meaning of the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> This has been a compassing stream. Now that I've explained all these things. <laughs> now that I explained all these things, I'm gonna sign off. Lord, if you <laughs> if you've enjoyed this stream, please remember to subscribe. You should subscribe. Did you know that for 99 cents you can help support the channel financially? It's true. You can support the channel financially by clicking on the join button or hitting the link that Streamlabs is telling you about from time to time. It's great. 
And then uh, you can also hit the like button to help this be <laughs> help this be supported by YouTube's and help me grow so that I can continue to do more legal education and learn more things and explain just all the things to you and and uh, and try to uh, and try to show you the vast repertoire of uh, of my knowledge base. So oh, man, this has been fun. Until later, my friends. I hope all's well. Cheers and goodbye. <laughs>